Good morning, everyone. I'm Nikki Stanzione. And I'm Kristen Van Dyke. And this is New Mexico style. And although it doesn't feel like it at all, today is officially the first day of spring. Yep, it's oh, here. It's here, officially. It moved in late last night yes. here. Of course, it moved in early this morning on the East Coast. So the yeah. first full day of spring. So it feels so it. not springy today at all. But this is the thing, as you know best, spring equinox is when the sun is positioned directly over the equator. Now, that occurred at 1.14 a.m. Eastern Time, which would be, of course, 11.14 p.m. Mountain Time for us. The spring equinox is one of two times during the entire year when the length of the day and the length of the night are just about equal. Right, and the Earth's not tilted one way or the other exactly. away from the sun. So, Pretty cool. You know, and then days are getting longer, of course, too. And we're yeah. getting closer to summer. But, uh, yeah, you know, whenever we get to springtime, the pictures start posting on Facebook. I don't know if you've seen it. People get their eggs and their brooms out. Egg balancers. To see if they can stand up because there's this saying that goes the position of the sun and the other planets on the equinoxes and makes these miraculous feats of balance happen. Okay, so we have eggs. Shall we, we balance do. our eggs? How do we, where do we balance them? <laughs> no. I think how it goes, supposedly. Yeah, it is. The way the right gravity here. works on days like this, you're supposed to be able to balance them straight up or upside down or something like that. Straight up, now egg, just Let's stay see. in your place, now forever. Oh, oh, oh. I can't get it. It's to not work. staying. I guess I have no balance in my working. life. Clearly. Hey, it's not working. I need balance. <laughs> okay, so I've seen this. There's been like this, this little fad too on Facebook. And, and it kind of got started during the solar flares too, where people were making their broomsticks. Oh, yeah. Up. Mm -hmm. So that's me. Is that you? <laughs> Kristen, <laughs> I had no I was idea. Like, I'm going to do it. And I swear, it felt like there was like magnetic forces pulling on the broom, but... Did you sing Defying Gravity from Wicked? I was Wicked? like, ooh, these people were behind, You can't even see, there's a restaurant right there. They're like looking at me like I'm the crazy person <laughs> to the window. But um, now, you know what? The, the funny thing is, is like, there's really no truth to any of this. Oh my God. You can like make your broom stand up any day if you try. Especially if it has like the little slanted thing. Egg, I don't know what Never the trick know. is with that, but it doesn't have anything to do with the equinox. Well, what if you're a witch? Then you could get the broom to stand up. She did yeah. when she defied Maybe gravity. I'm a witch. No, Maybe I'm a witch. no, I've done, I've like done a witch. it. I like we're, we're like Glinda. <laughs> we're like Glinda, the or good Samantha. witch. Or Samantha. Or oh yeah, I wonder if I can. I've always wanted to do this thing. Mm -hmm. If anybody ever gets the trick of the, mm, 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 yeah. let me know. No, it's been on my mind for years. <laughs> I've been working on that. Maybe we should ask Elizabeth. Let's check in with KRQ News 13 anchor Elizabeth Alvarez with this morning's headlines. Can you do the Samantha Bewitched nose twinkle? Man, let me tell you, I wish I could because I would be wishing so many things. In the game, right? <laughs> Good morning, ladies. Good morning to you at home. Topping your morning news headlines this morning, the investigation continues into the latest officer-involved shooting in Albuquerque that has left one man dead. The city's police chief says the suspect, who has a long rap sheet, used an SUV to ram a patrol car. Here's News 13's Nancy Laughlin. A woman showed up to the fatal shooting of the man she says was her boyfriend. Her family members and friends tell us she knew him well. 31-year-old Daniel Tillerson, who goes by the name Oreo. Albuquerque police knew him, too. Online court records show Tillerson has a long rap sheet that includes more than 20 arrests for everything from burglary to car theft and kidnapping. And that's not all. The person we believe it is is known to officers in the Southeast Heights. Uh, he does have a criminal record, including the sale of, uh, of narcotics in the area. But his latest run-in with the law ended with an officer shooting and killing Tillerson. Investigators are still putting it together, but here's what they say so far. Someone called police police just after 1 o'clock saying a guy was trying to sell stolen stereo equipment in an apartment complex parking lot near Marquette in Texas. The officer, who's been a cop for 18 years, showed up. He was outside his patrol car. Tillerson was behind the wheel of the black SUV. The two exchanged words and the officer fired off two shots, hitting the SUV with one bullet and Tillerson with the other. Chief, bottom line is, did he try and run him down? Is that why the officer opened fire? Well, again, we're in a very small area. Um, all I know is from the physical characteristics of the scene, uh, the offender's vehicle uh, did ram into at least one other vehicle and the police car. Uh, the officer was in a very confined space. So at this point in time, because it's only the officer who was present uh, that we need to talk to, uh, I'm not going to speculate on anything until we have uh, a full, all the full facts. Nancy Laughlin, KRQE News 13. Police say they don't think that the SUV that was driven by Tillerson actually belonged to him.
An alert for parents this morning. Police are looking for a guy they say tried to chase and abduct a teenage girl in Albuquerque from her bus stop yesterday. The 15-year-old girl tells us a man pulled up next to her near Catherine in Florida and offered her $8 to have sex with him. She says he then got out of the car and grabbed her shoulder, and then this happened. He got out of the car and chased me for like a block or two. And then I finally hid in an alley and just hopped a fence. I can't even shut my eyes without flashing back and seeing his face. The girl told police the man is described as Native American, six feet tall with short black hair. He was driving a gray Subaru sedan. If you have any information about this, you're urged to call police. And police in Rio Rancho are still searching for a man who might look like this. They say this man may have raped a 13-year-old girl last month. The girl says the man kidnapped her from her bus stop, raped her, and then let her go 18 hours later in Albuquerque. Police say they've gotten some tips that they are following up on. A guy with a history of breaking into some homes, boy, did he pick the wrong house here in Albuquerque to mess with. The homeowner was ready for him with a pretty painful surprise. This is the suspect I'm talking about, Richard Garcia. This is the guy. He has been arrested 37 times, but he finally met his match over the weekend. And a Northwest Albuquerque homeowner heard Garcia breaking in, so cops say the homeowner grabbed his gun and shot him in the back. The homeowner then called 911. Now, Garcia was rushed to the hospital and should be okay, but what will happen to him when he gets out of the hospital is still up in the air. You see, back in December, a judge ruled the suspect was incompetent to go to trial, so it is possible that this serial burglar could walk free. The homeowner, who shot Garcia, by the way, is not facing any charges. Authorities this morning are still looking for a Cannon Air Force Base lieutenant who has gone missing. 31-year-old Lieutenant Scott Lee was listed as AWOL yesterday. Officials say he was last seen leaving his Clovis apartment on Monday of last week. Military officials say he failed to show up for duty at Canada Air Force Base the next day. Lee's Toyota Tacoma truck is also missing. Now, the manager at the apartment complex where he lives says his belongings are still in the apartment. The Clovis News Journal reports that Air Force investigators found an unused gun cleaning kit in the apartment, but it is not known if Lee has a gun. Police continue to search for whomever tossed three puppies and their mother from a moving van. On Tuesday night in the Las Lunas area on Highway 6, a witness saw these puppies and their mother thrown from a moving car. Um, the mother was immediately killed by another car that was driving by, and one of these puppies has a severely broken jaw. Oh, how awful. Well, the three healer pups that you see here are being cared for at the Animal Humane in Albuquerque. Now, the one with the jaw injury, injury rather, will undergo surgery today. And there is very little information about who this person is who threw the dogs, only that they were driving a dark color van. If you know anything about this case or saw anything suspicious, you're urged to call the Animal Cruelty Hotline. By the way, the person responsible could face felony charges. An earthquake that struck in southeastern New Mexico continues to be quite the talker this morning. A 2.9 magnitude earthquake was centered 23 miles east of Carlsbad near Loving around 11 o'clock yesterday morning. There are unconfirmed reports that the quake caused part of the Mosaic Potash mine to collapse. No other damage or injuries have been reported. And that wraps it up for your Tuesday morning headlines. Be sure to catch Matt Morrow, Kristen Van Dyke, and me every weekday morning on KRQE News 13 beginning at 4 30 a.m. Nikki and Kristen, I'm going to send it back to you. Thank you mm -hmm. for all that horrible news. Elizabeth, my gosh, what a tough I'm, morning. I'm kind of shaken up by that earthquake. Who would have thought? I mean, mm -hmm. New Mexico earthquake? <sighs> Lots of show it can happen anywhere. Yeah, lots of tough news this morning to hear, yeah. but hopefully things will get better. I know. Well, David actually did a story on the news that wasn't so horrible about yeah. pollen and collecting and the pollen count. And how people in Albuquerque actually we sent professionals out to count how much pollen's in the air uh -huh. with the elm and the cedar, and it's really a cool process. Interesting. So get the allergy medicines out.
Because yeah. it's pretty rough out there. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's it, gonna be rough and when the wind blows, it's worse, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's not fun. Well, okay. Here's something that's an interesting story on on the other side of news. The United States is about to launch a new search for Amelia Earhart's plane. Now, this is obviously 75 years after she vanished over the South Pacific. That's right. The search will center on Nicky Mararo Islands between Hawaii and Australia in the South Pacific. The half million dollar search, financed with private funds, will begin in July. I really hope they can find that. I know. That's so interesting. Interesting, right? Mm -hmm. I love that. Now, I'm not sure if this is good news or bad news for Denver uh, Broncos fans, but me, the Giants fan, the big brother <laughs> of my hero, Peyton Manning, is just about ready to close the deal to become the next quarterback of, yes, the Broncos. And Tim Tebow will be traded, even though the popular quarterback energized the Broncos, leading them to the playoffs last season. I mean, who could forget Tebow last season? What a play that was. And gosh, everybody was just trending about him. It was the biggest news of, it was the biggest news at the time. He's very, very popular with the fans and with the public, but we'll have to see how quickly he gets picked up. Mm -hmm. because I don't know that he's all that popular with the coaches and the managers and stuff like that mm -hmm. when it comes to playing, but we'll see. You know, always a fan favorite. Well, his outspoken religious beliefs were also a big deal mm -hmm. with him. So, you know, we'll see what happens. But Peyton, you know, Peyton is a, is an amazing football player. Of course, Indianapolis Colts will be sad to see him go. Um, I know my grandma will be very sad about that because she was a big, Aww. big Peyton fan. But we're happy about Eli. Now, it's yeah. funny. It used to be like Eli was like, the brother. Now it's like Peyton is the brother. Yeah, it is. It is like that. <laughs> Interesting story in yes. Hollywood today and kind of co correlating with the uh, yes, with, with us. Mexico. Yeah, absolutely. Ashton Kutcher has signed up for a trip into outer space with Virgin Galactic. Crazy. As we know, Virgin CEO Richard Branson, Sir Richard Branson, that is, will start liftoff from Spaceport America in southern New Mexico in the not too distant future. It's pretty crazy, up. right? The 34 year old actor is the 500th astronaut customer, thrill seeking stars are paying two hundred thousand dollars for a trip to the final frontier so hopefully they'll make it back i hope so. <laughs> i would not want to take a discount discounted flight into outer no, space no that's where you have to pay top dollar you do you yeah, need to absolutely. every penny make sure you make it back alive it's kind of scary yeah well we wish him lots of luck and we'll keep you posted on that story in the meantime another interesting story today first rosie and now tmz has learned that roughly 30 other people at the oprah winfrey network got the pink slip including mm -hmm two high-level executives. Yeah, and the timing is pretty interesting, you know, considering yeah. they just canceled, or O did, she canceled Rosie O'Donnell's show mm -hmm. uh, not too long ago. Owen has been struggling with low ratings since its launch, and one source tells TMZ it's like a ghost town over there. Uh, Harpo, and she was so excited to be at Harpo, but mm. by the way, we're actually hearing that Oprah called Rosie O'Donnell and delivered the news that she was canceling the Rosie <laughs> show, and then Rosie hung up on the big O. Now, truthfully, that does not surprise me because I think Rosie I has I wonder how that conversation went. Do you have any idea? She just, I think it went, Rose, Rosie, 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 we'll be, we'll be right back. We'll be right back, but we'll, we'll, we'll be right back. <laughs> she says we'll be right back 16 <laughs> times ago. No, okay. she probably said, listen, I, she was probably really diplomatic, and uh -huh. she probably said, you know the show's not doing as well and as we'd like. And then Rosie like, like, yeah, and then, <laughs> and then goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye to you, Oprah Goodbye. Winfrey. It's so, it, you know, the thing is they really hyped it up because when, Ro oh, when Oprah did her last show, she right. had Rosie come out to Harpo and it's sad. I feel bad. I feel bad for her, but I truthfully, personally, I didn't think it was going to work. I just mm -hmm. didn't think it would. Now for a real experience in contrast, how about this one? Visit the land of fire and ice. Right. Located in part of a collapsed lava tube about a half mile from Mandera volcano near Grants are the ice caves where New Mexico style photographer Kenny Hatchett went day tripping. Take a look. Okay, so we're on our way to the ice caves out uh, just south of Grants. I I'm excited about it because it's a place that uh, I've never been to. I'll be honest, I've never even heard of it. But it sounds like a really cool experience. It's going to take about an hour and a half. It's uh, about an hour to Grants and then 25 miles south of that to add another 20, 30 minutes. Real pretty scenery, you know, you have mountains, you have the mesas, and definitely worth the drive. The Ice Cave in Bandera Volcano is a geologic site. It's a family-owned natural attraction, tourist attraction. We've been here since the 1940s. Wow. Same families operated it and owned it. The Ice Cave is part of a section of a collapsed lava tube that poured out of the Bandera Volcano. Just the right physical features have combined to make a natural ice box. That's a rare condition for caves. So right now the floor of ice is about 20 feet thick. It's been forming for about 3,000 years. In the volcano, it's um, been called one of the best examples of a cinder cone eruption in North America. Really? 
and for cinder cones it's a giant one. Most cinder cones are pretty small. This makes an excellent day trip from Albuquerque. It's an hour and a half away and um, when you get here it's a great educational and fun experience for the whole family. Uh, we're open every day of the year. We open at 8 o'clock in the morning every day of the year. Our Closing time changes seasonally. Currently, during the winter time, it's 4 p.m. In the spring, we close at f at, uh, at 5, and then in the summer, we close at 6. Okay. If you get here by those times, you can still start the trails. Mm -hmm. For teenagers and adults, it's $11. For children ages 5 through 12, it's $5, and children under 5 are free. In the area, there's also two national monuments, and the Wild Spirit Wolf Sanctuary, and the Grants Mining Museum. So. Somebody coming from Albuquerque, to, you could spend a good part of the day in the area and be back by dinner time that night. Thanks so much for that, Kenny. And of course, you can get more information to visit the land of fire and ice by going to info at 888-ICE-CAVE. Very easy to remember that phone number. And you can also go to the website at www.icecavesplural.com. Right. Pretty cool. Yeah, it is really cool. It's really yeah. pretty. There's so many so places pretty. to go in Mexico. You I can't know. Go wrong. You can do a ton of vacations. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Well, spring is here, and now it's getting even prettier around the area. And it sprung in Washington, D.C., too, yeah. where the National Cherry Blossom Festival is underway. The festival commemorates the gift of Japanese cherry trees 100 <laughs> years ago by the mayor of Tokyo to the city of Washington. Go now, pretty. Yes, gorgeous. The trees were donated in an effort to enhance the growing friendship between the United States and Japan. Okay, say cherry so trees. Say cherry trees three, three times, times fast. fast. Yeah, cherry trees. Let's do cheese. it. Cherry cheese. I'm hungry. <laughs> <laughs> cherry cheese. Cherry cheese. I can't. I can't yeah. do it. You try it. You try it at home. <laughs> Meanwhile, not a lot of cherry trees um, in blossom today. It's a little cold. It's a little what chilly out trees? there. Uh, yeah, they're gonna be. They're okay, I think. <laughs> we, we we got close to the freezing mark. Any of those plants, you know, you you, you gotta still think about the tender j vegetation. We're yeah. getting closer to the last freeze date, but we're not quite there yet. And okay. this morning we start off at freezing in Albuquerque, and we're gonna see a warmer day today, but it's still going to be pretty chilly out. And we're dealing with some snow. Look at Raton Pass; it looks brutal. Look at that. 